in my comics. I collected my thoughts. Now here is my top 10 comics of the week. Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do my top 10 comic books of the week and this is for the week of 2 13 and 19 now this top 10 list is based off of my top 10 most anticipated comic list that debuts every sunday night so without further ado guys i just wanted to let you know before we get started that there are spoilers in these reviews so if you have not read your books or you don't want to be spoiled please this is your spoil warning and also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, guys. It really helps. All right, so again, without further ado, let's get started with the worst pick of the week. And this time, it goes to Red Hood Outlaw, issue 31. I really did not like this book, guys. I don't like this story arc with these uh, Solomon Grundy's that uh, Jason is searching for to try to stop them. He comes up into this jail cell or whatever the case may be and he comes across uh, the villain known as Solitary and he's a guy that's been fused with three other humans. You don't know where he quite is in certain points in time but I just felt like that this was almost like pointless and the whole reason why we get to this point uh, you know, is to obviously get Bunker back. He was from, I guess, the Teen Titans uh, a while back. And this whole thing about the origin story of Solitary, of, you know, how he was created, if you really do care about the character. And also, you wind up finding out that we pull a Star Wars moment uh, on in this, in this point in time, and he's just like, you see, Jason, I am your father. And Jason's like, no, you're not. <laughs> so you're like, okay. I, I just, I don't know. I don't find myself caring about this particular story. The only time that was, you know, kind of touching is when he, he, he goes to Roy Harper's grave and he kind of, you know, goes to the grave and he pays his respects. But that was the only thing that I really found, you know, exciting. And then I guess it looks like then you know, Jason's gonna go back to Gotham. I don't know. I just, I feel like this comic ever since it went to this weird town uh, space, it just kind of lost its way and I found myself disinterested in it. So I don't know. Hopefully it, it finds its way back, but it's a very forgettable book and a very forgettable story arc. So we'll see where it goes with this issue 32, but this was my least favorite of the week. All right. So now, what was the surprise pick of the week? Well, this goes to Flash, issue 64. This is the price, the storyline called The Price, I think part two. This is where Batman and Flash actually team up together on trying to solve uh, this case of what happened at Flash's museum. And we find out at the end of Batman that uh, Gotham Girl was involved. So when I read issue 64, I was really surprised by the issue that we were getting to see the return of Gotham Girl and Gotham and I was just thinking wow we haven't seen these characters in a very long time so to bring them back I was like yes that's awesome and Gotham Girl is obviously messed up I love the tension between the Flash and Bruce in this issue um, he actually sits there and says did you send Gotham Girl to the sanctuary because we think that maybe uh, Flash thinks that maybe Gotham Girl is responsible for the situation that happened in the sanctuary in uh, Heroes in Crisis. So that meant for a very emotional, um, you know, moment in the comic as well. But she's trying to resurrect her brother, and uh, it, it's a really great series. The artwork is really a lot of fun to to look at, and uh, I, this really surprised me. I actually forgot to pick up this issue at the comic book store this week but i did read it digitally that's why i don't have any pages to show you but very pleasantly surprised by this story and uh, i can't wait to see where it goes from here all right so now kicking off the official countdown we come in at number 10 
And number 10 goes to Spawn Kills Everyone 2. Uh, this is issue 3. Uh, this was kind of on my... Uh, this was on number nine most anticipated. This is one of those books where you just read to have fun with, right? And so, like I said, Spawn, he had babies. He wasn't meeting his quota. He was desperate or he was, he was, he was depressed. And we wind up finding out that all his little turd babies wind up killing all the heroes in earth. Uh, for him and he's just like wow that's crazy and it's funny how they show these death scenes this is what makes the series a lot of fun is how these creatures again kill all their characters we get to see the death of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in this issue where they're in a hot tub and it gets overheated and they become like turtle soup and then we get to see like the death of like Indiana Jones in this issue as well so that is a lot of fun so that's what makes the book comical and we get to also see um, uh, Thor in here too and, and kind of like the interpretation of what Thor is like without all his armor like he's this you know out of shape skinny guy it's kind of funny uh, but it makes for a lot of fun, and at the end of the issue, we get to see uh, Klaunos as he is about to do battle against Spawn. Um, I, I thought this is a blast of a book. And honestly, guys, there's really comics this week that I didn't like. They were all pretty good, besides that Red Hood Outlaw issue. So this is the end of the issue here. So this makes for a lot of fun. If this comes out in trade and you guys are looking for a good time to read something, this might be good for you. There's only four parts of it. Or if your local comic book shop still has back issues of this series, you might want to check it out as well. It's just a good time. It's a laugh. You can't take anything serious from it. All right. So moving on to number nine. And number nine this week goes to Captain Marvel um, issue two. Now, this was number eight on my most anticipated, so it did fall down one slot. Um, we get to see Captain Marvel uh, winds up going into this um, different, I guess, part of Staten Island that was caved off by this barrier. Um, it becomes like this different dimension or different world. It's like an apocalyptic world and whatnot. And uh, we wind up getting to see that she uh, goes against the nuclear man in the issue. So there's some good fighting scenes as well in this book. And uh, we get to see her team up with Hazmat and Jessica. And all her friends wind up getting sucked into this world before she actually did. And it's kind of crazy because all the women are being captured uh, in the issue and they're all being kept. And now all the men are being captured in another place and they're being kept with... I guess nuclear man as well so Captain Marvel has to come up to speed of what it's like going in this world what do they have to do to get back um, you know Jessica's friends have been there longer than she has so it, it makes for an interesting story the only thing that I don't like about it it seems like there's like over explaining of a situation that's going on and it seems to drag the story a little bit too long uh, I'm not kind of a fan of that uh, but it makes for an interesting story and by the time we get to the end of this issue we see that Captain Marvel is doing battle against nuclear man's metal men and uh, somehow She-Hulk gets through the barrier as well but she can't stay Hulk and as Captain Marvel was excited as she comes through the barrier takes away some of our hero's powers and as Jessica went through that barrier. She's no longer uh, I'm sorry Jennifer comes through that barrier She's no longer she Hulk and she's basically falling to her death at the end of the issue And you're just kind of like oh wow that that makes for a quite interesting uh, Cliffhanger, but my prediction here is that I feel like uh, Carol is going to escape and she's going to catch um, Jennifer just in time, so this is a good book. However, it's not it's not the story I would want for an introductory story arc to getting back into a character. Um, going into this different type of realm, fighting this weird character by the name of Nuclear Man and dividing it between women and men. It just, I, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I love the way the characters are written and I love the interaction between the characters as well. So we'll see what happens with Captain Marvel. Alright, so moving on now to number 
eight. And number eight this week goes to Detective Comics issue 998. Unfortunately, this was my least favorite of the story arc so far, um, as it was number one on my most anticipated list this week. Um, it's still a good story, but I think it takes away from, I, I guess, what kind of has been happening. Um, at first, I thought Hugo Strange was going to be the guy that's behind everything that's been going on by creating the creature, the demon that Batman has been fighting and taking the lives of the people he has been involved with. Uh, but that's not the case. Um, it's been, it's been kind of crazy, actually. Batman is meet up, does battle in his Hellbat costume. He meets up with Jason Blood, the Demon Knight, I guess, and they wind up doing battle against each other or with the demon or whatever the case may be. Um, for some reason, I don't know if I'm just not attached to the character as much. Um, I, I don't know. For some reason, this just took me out of it. I did find the battle, again, was kind of cool here. Um, and I thought the artwork was really good as well. Uh, but it got me confused at the end of the issue after we got everything resolved with Jason Blood and, and the meeting with Stone and whatnot. And we wound up seeing Batman sees, I guess, a younger version of himself. So I don't know. I was a little bit confused on this one. And I thought, again, it was the weaker of the two of all the stories that I've read so far in this story arc so um it was okay i liked it again this overall story arc is solid i can't wait to get to issue a thousand but again i'm just not so familiar with the character in this book and uh you know and his connection to batman here so yeah we'll see what happens in the next issue but i still have high expectations for it okay so moving on to my number seven book of the week, and this goes to Murder Falcon issue five. Um, I think Murder Falcon this time around was number four among most anticipated, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't a good book. It was still a really good book. In fact, we get introduced to a new band that's taking place in this like realm that's going to help uh, Jake do battle against the bad guys, and I think their name is like the Whispers. And whatnot, and you kind of got to see like what their powers were on on uh, trying to defeat these uh, dark overlord demon-like creatures, right? And uh, you get to see some cool moments between Jake and his wife, and uh, on how you know he wants to fight for his life, and I think that was a uh, really cool scenes in this book as well. So that's what makes the book a lot of fun is the emotional impact in this book, and then we get to see our heroes. Um, try to do battle again by the end of this issue against the overlord demons and the artwork is just way out there in this issue so it, again it was a lot of fun and uh we wound up seeing i guess a team up between the bands uh and hopefully at prevailing in this whole thing but look at this cool entity that the lead singer of the west whispers has he has like this i don't know like Groot looking like creature it's just so different but again the emotional impact that's in murder falcon is great and i love the series so great stuff there all right so moving forward to my number six book of the week this goes to amazing spider-man issue 15 uh amazing spider-man on my most anticipated list was number six so it really fell right where it needed to be. I think that the story is solid, but the artwork kind of takes you out of the book. Um, this is Rhino in this little bubble-like thing over here, as you can see. Uh, I'm just not a fan of that. I, I just don't like the way Rhino looks. I'm not a fan of the coloring, the outlining, just everything seems to be kind of blending together in the book and whatnot. I just don't like it. Uh, but the story itself is kind of good because... We wind up getting to see um, Kurt Connor's son, who just wants to be a normal boy, and uh, but he's stuck being like a lizard boy right now, and he can't interact with his friends, and um, you know he's always grounded all the time, and his father's afraid of what he's going to be like if he's seen in public, and so uh, that makes for an emotional story, and he kind of sneaks out at the end of the issue, and he's going out to meet some kind of mystery friend that's been texting him, so we don't know what's going on in there, and then you get the whole thing of where um, 
where uh, Spider-Man is actually trying to save Aunt May, which obviously that's a very predictable part in the story, as he, of course, he is going to save them, or her. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was okay. I think the most interesting part of the story is we get some story progression on what's going to happen with uh, Craven the Hunter. Uh, we get to see kind of like his his plot, uh, what he kind of tries to do. He wants to, you know, he captures all of these villains and then he wants to incapture or put a dome over New York or, or his... Um, uh, Central Park to use as like his battleground or something. Uh, this was one part that was really cool with the artwork here as we get to see it in black and white, like old school, like Ned, Leed, Ned Leeds in this book as well. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really, really cool how he wants to make his battleground like Central Park and I, I thought that was really a lot that was really awesome there so I think this is gonna be a good story leading up to the hunt I guess that's what it's called or hunted and I'm um, looking forward to future spider-man issues and don't worry guys because the artwork will change back all right so now we're moving in to the top five and my number five this week goes to spider Gwen ghost spider um, I thought this book was a good I would say a official uh, kickoff to the Spider Ghost Spider comic book, right? Um, this was number seven on my most anticipated list, and we got to see the struggles of Gwen Stacy trying to, again, fit in, be part of society as Gwen Stacy, you know? And I think that was what made this book so good. You know, she's part of a band. She has to live up to the expectations with their band, you know? She has this relationship with her father, and obviously she has to be the uh, the the good daughter. But you know, her daughter and her and her father do have a great relationship. She uh, he understands that she is Ghost Spider, but she has to go to school, has to you know have a future. She has to try to fit in in school as well. And uh, again, it's just her trying to balance herself as a hero and Gwen Stacy and she has a hard time just being Gwen Stacy than it is uh, Ghost Spider and so it was a very emotional issue and I really liked it and uh, you know at the end of the issue though we wind up finding out that when Gwen stops a bank heist we see that the person that's in charge of the whole gang is um, uh, John Jameson the man the man wolf and I was like oh that's cool so I was like, that, that gets me going for a next issue, and, and I liked it. So a very emotional issue. It really breaks down who Gwen Stacy is and how she feels about herself. So I like this book. It's a, it, was, it was a great read and finally got away from the whole spider getting thing. All right, so next we're moving on to my number four, and my number four book of the week goes to Wonder Twins issue one. Now the Wonder Twins this week uh, was number 10 on my most anticipated because they are kind of this cheesy duo or whatnot, but it was a lot of fun. I thought it was a great book to read. We got to see where they actually came from. We got to see a little history about them, but it wasn't just like this boring dialogue going, okay, this is where the Wonder Twins came. It was like Zan had to give this speech uh, in front of his crowd, the kids were bored of him. They made um, some humorous uh, moments in the book about, uh, you know, Superman saying, well, yeah, all they are is, you know, water and they turn into an animal. There's nothing big about them. And um, it really has to do about these guys kind of fitting in into the world as well because they come from a different planet. They go to high school. They got to they got to fit into that high school crowd, right? And so it makes it a very relatable book as well. Uh, so this was a really great read. It was comical at times. They do uh, <laughs> dial H. They do uh, they uh, do battle against Mitzelplik in here, which is a very nostalgic character in the Super Friends series. So this is a great book, a good time to start reading Wonder Twins. If you guys were curious about this one, uh, I liked it, and I can't wait to see what happens going forward with the book. So, yes, Wonder Twins, good stuff. All right, so moving forward now, we're going on to our top three. And my number three book of the week, it goes to Dead Man Logan. This is part four. Uh, on my most anticipated, 
Uh, this one fell, where was this one on my list this week? Number five. So this one exceeded expectations this time around as we get to find out that, yes, Logan, he is dying, which we already knew, but now instead of having 12 months to live, he only has six months to live because he's been in, uh, injecting himself with this drug to force his healing factor to work into overdrive because when he doesn't use the drug, the healing factor is slowed down considerably. But in this issue, it focuses on um, Clint and Mysterio. And Mysterio knows that the bad guys that he was working with are going to betray him. So he wants to go with Hawkeye, team up with Hawkeye, work with Logan, and to try to make things right between them. Because in this world, Mysterio just wants nothing else but to be left alone and just be a normal person again. So he wants to change teams to make things right. The artwork is good. There's some good comedy in this book as well. Um, when Hawkeye and Mysterio were talking with each other and they wanted to go into the X-Men headquarters, Hawkeye was like, you got to disguise yourself as something else. And... Um, besides uh besides yourself because he might run at you and just and just kill you and so mysterio's like okay and so he winds up trying to come up with all these different characters so he comes up with like cable and uh cyclops and professor x and he's like dead dead well maybe he's dead i don't know these days gene gray definitely not so it, again, it's a good book. I really liked it. I really enjoy the series a lot. And uh, by the time you get to the end of it, they're going to Neo Hydra's base to do battle against them. So really a lot of fun, guys. I definitely recommend Dead Man Logan. All right. So number two on the list this week goes to Avengers No Road Home. Um... This is issue one of this weekly series. I love No Surrender, and I love the introduction to this one. The only reason why it probably wasn't number one, because it was mainly a setup issue of the events to come. Uh, we get to see the assembly of the team of this book, and we get to see that our team <clears throat> excuse me, consists of Hercules and Rocket Raccoon, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, Vision, Spectrum, Blue Marvel, um, you know, the Hulk and the Voyager makes a return in this book and the artwork is absolutely gorgeous in this book. And so what happens after a long lengthy, I guess, assembly of the team that the Voyager does is she's seen this overwhelming darkness and uh, we get to see that all of Hercules' uh, brothers and sisters all like Zeus and Artemis and everybody else, um, they all wind up perishing. And it's because of this goddess of night and her name is Nex. And when you actually say her name, I guess she somewhat appears and she could kill you. Um, and um, it was a very sad book, uh, very emotional in a way too, when it comes to Hercules finding out the way Olympus looked. So I was like, holy cow, that's, that's insane. But at the end of the issue, when Scarlet Witch calls Nex's name, um, yeah, this is what happens. And you're like, oh shit. You're like, this is a serious chick here. So how are they going to defeat this person or goddess or whoever she is? I'm not familiar with her, but for her to destroy all the gods, that is intense right there. That is a very powerful being. So I can't wait to read the next issue of this next week. All right. So, what is my number one pick of the week? Well, this goes to Criminal, issue two, uh, by Ed Brubaker. This was a phenomenal read this week, guys, as this one, as comic fans as we are, has to do with a comic illustrator. And uh, we wind up finding out that he gets an old assistant of his to drive him around to go to cons and things like that and he's basically he's out of money and so he goes and he sells like illegal drawings uh counterfeit drawings he gets people to reprint them out it's just it's just crazy but you get to learn the history of the illustrator and what he's done in the past um of course 
he almost like kills somebody in the issue and stuff like that. But it was great character development on learning about the man. And there was also uh, great um, references to good comic artists, uh, editors out there. It was all name dropped in this entire issue, which was a lot of fun. Um, this was a really good book. Can't go into too much detail without taking such a long time. But if you're looking for um, good character, I guess, explanations and a good story, you got to dive into Criminal because these characters are awesome. And the story doesn't continue like issue after issue. You get introduced to one character. How you got introduced in the first issue? Well, it doesn't continue in the second issue. You just get introduced to another character. And the story will continue somewhere down the line. Uh, so really great stuff. I mean, you learn about his daughter and how he did not have a relationship with his daughter and his daughter hated him. Um, so yeah, really great stuff. I loved Criminal. Loved the learning about this comic illustrator. Definitely my pick of the week. I got to give it to the Independent this week because it's just it's just awesome to see that original content, original characters. And when you read them for the first time, you're like, man, that is awesome. So I love this book and it didn't, it didn't, it helped that it was obviously comic related, right? In the story itself. So there you guys have it. There are my top 10 comic books of the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Now it's your turn to put in the comments below what were your 10 uh, favorite comics of the week. And as always fans, thank you so much for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. And until that next comic book review fans, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification button. Take care fans, see you soon, bye.